Hey guys. Today we got rained out at work. Uh, the construction work, not the firework. The firework never gets rained out. Um, and I was bored. So I remembered I had a bunch of beer coolers or ice coolers, ice chests, whatever you want to call them, that need repair. Now, several years ago, we did a real quick, in a hurry, uh, old, uh, this is cloth fire hose repair. And it's lasted quite a long time. Now you can see here's the, the factory uh, plastic hinges that do not last at all. You can see they just split in the middle. But, uh, it, like I said, it was a hasty repair. It was not proper at all, but it worked for a while. Um, last minute thing, you can see. I've got several coolers here I'm working on today. The hinges are going south. Here's one that I did a repair on years ago with a piece of leather, and that lasted quite a long time, but uh, eventually they, they wear out. Well, let me show you my solution. This is five inch rubber fire hose. Now, uh, y'all are firefighters or thereabouts, that you know it's a sexless coupling. It's called a storch fitting. Um, you can use the cloth style, but I prefer to use this five inch rubber, or plastic, or it's rubber actually. And if you look inside, right there, you can see that there is um, some mesh or some fiber, fibrous material in there that helps hold it together. This is very durable. I've seen this completely inflated, run up to, I don't know how much, I don't know. Let's call it 100 PSI, 150 PSI, and seen a chief's car run over it, and they don't blow up. There's actually a YouTube video of that. It's kind of hilarious. I think it's up north somewhere. Here's what I've done. You can see it works quite well. Um, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Uh, one thing to notice here, um, when I, and I'll point this out why there's different sizes of these, these straps. Uh, this is a lower profile lid. Um, and these coolers here are all higher profi profile. So therefore you're going to need different sized pieces of hose. Let me get my tripod set up and I will get to going with this. Okay, first of all I'm gonna show you the, first of all I'm gonna show you the tools needed. It's real simple. A razor knife, some form of marking utensil. I prefer the Sharpie because it marks on that plastic real well. Tape measure or you can do two in one. You could actually use a speed square or framing square and and that. But I'm using the I'm just using a tape measure. It's, it's carpentry tools and a. Um, if you're not careful, I wouldn't necessarily use an impact recorder's drill because if you drill the screws in too hard, uh, you'll strip them out. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you all this. How durable this is. This is a pair of medic shears. And if y'all know anything about medic shears, I think there's a YouTube video where the guy cuts a penny with it. Or the girl, whoever. But I'll show you how durable this is. That is super, super, super tough. And then it just makes a, makes a mess out of it. Uh, so I don't use them. And here's regular, you know, the whisk straight yellow uh, metal shears. And it, these are these are good shears, you know. They're in my box, and they just they'll get through it, but they make a mess of it and tears it all up. So I don't recommend using that. So like I said, here's what we're starting with. On the bigger coolers, I'm using a five inch wide by four inch tall piece of, of uh, hose. And on the smaller lid one, I'm using a five inch wide by two and a half inches wide. Okay, let me go ahead and get set up. Okay, let me show you how easy this cuts, guys. Um, I went ahead and squared this end. That's fairly square. Mark over my four. Mark down my four inches. Pretty much just that simple. Now, if you look on right here on the hose, scoot up to it. There's lines that run down it. Those lines should be fairly square. So I'm just going to go off them. Measure over my five inches. Once again, find the next uh, closest line. And I'm just going to follow down that line. And 
There you have it. Now, I'd already cut this one, so that makes three, because I'm going to run three hinges across the bottom of it. On this guy, I'm just going to go ahead and ease the corners off just a little bit. Here's my dirt off my, my impact. I quit smoking, but I still carry a cigarette lighter because they're handy. You don't have to do this, but it just keeps the fuzzies down. And on a side note, if this stuff's on fire, it sticks to your finger, it's going to burn. on this to be a short video but it's probably not gonna be but we'll see when it comes down to editing okay switch sides here okay I'm gonna remove the old screws now you can see that was piece of regular fire hose what it is is there's you got the outside casing on a piece of fire hose and you got the inside which is where the water runs so there's your rubber rubberization or whatever and your fire hose has got a sleeve that goes around it so when you're going through fires or nails and stuff don't don't poke into your hose uh, but it happens we, so that's how we get these hoses because they become to where we can't use them and they we, we put them out of service and a lot of times it's just not worth repairing them they have multiple holes in them or whatnot um, it, it happens they get old and it happens so there you have it. That uh, as far as the hardware, the screws, um, you could go back with just four. You don't actually have to have. You don't have to make them as big as this. You could literally cut them in half and do what you want. But I'm a big fan of overkill. Like I said these coolers, they get used. They get used a lot. Um, so the hardware that, that you pull off the old hinges are sufficient to do the job. But uh, as you've seen on my cooler over there on the bed of the truck. Um, I went overkill and I'm gonna do the same on these because they do take abuse so on that note what I did is I went to the local hardware store and purchased a box of them now if you see that it's number eight by five eighths stainless steel I would not do anything but stainless um, simply because you know it's a wet environment and they're going to rust if you don't. So, that being said. Okay, now you've seen me take the hinge off. I'm going to take this one here off as well. Now, with these here, I know that I want three across the top and three midsection. Now, if you see, I've got these lines marked in here. And what that is for is working with my new tripod here. So you see where the lines mark up at. So it's all said and done. I want to have a row of three across here, a row of three across in this section, three in this section, and three down here. So I'll go ahead and lay that out. There you go. Now I'm going to take them over to the drill press. I'm going to put all three of them together. And I'm going to punch them out. 
Okay, so I just realized off screen that um, I said I was going to go to the drill press and show you how to drill them out. It was a ridiculously unnecessary step. You can see I didn't drill those out. I'm just simply running the screw gun through them and uh, starting them into a piece of plywood. Just letting them punch through just a little bit. Get the first three started and go with it. I went ahead and did the bottom one that way. Well, I partially used my holes, but so it was a ridiculously unnecessary step to do. And by the, you can just do it. What I'm doing now is I'm filling all these little holes, these previous holes, that could potentially cause um, um, moisture to get in and potentially rot the cooler out worse than it needs to be. And I'm just using that right there. Um, I like this stuff because it, well, it bonds wood, stone, metal, ceramic, foam, glass, and more. Um, uh, it basically turns into a foam when it's done. Um, and I'm not even going to, you know, I'll clean the holes up a little bit, but it'll get in there and fill the little holes and be done with it. So, let's get started here. I did film the drill press set up, but I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. It's just, we don't need it. Go ahead and start in the middle. And this first one is going to fight you a little bit. And of course, it's going to fight me a whole lot more being that I'm on camera. There we go. Now I got the first one in and just kind of basically try to line it up fairly neat. Most people aren't going to be whipping out a tape measure. And Checking your hinges on your beer cooler. They're just going to be raiding your beer cooler. There we go. Follow the steps down. There you go. Two more screws to go and finish the rest of the hinges and a ridiculously simple solution to a problem. Potentially, I've seen people throw away beer coolers. These coolers are, I think the last time we priced them, $80. Now well, you're asking, well, where can I get fire hose at? Well, most of your municipalities, um, well, being that if you are watching my videos, you're probably redneck enough that you can figure out where to find fire hose at. But if you're not, most municipalities, the volunteer stations will probably give it away to you. Uh, you're not going to get a new hose, you're going to get an old blown out hose. That being said, a little donation goes a long ways. I'm not saying bribery, but your volunteer stations are all donations. Uh, if you live in a metropolitan area, um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think we're friendly enough at our fire department uh, that if you were to come up, we could probably arrange it. I would like to think that most of them are. Um, and I'm basically going to do uh, second and third burst, same as the first, and I'll show you the uh, outcome when we're done with it. Follow with me. And there you have it. All three uh, hinges are done, screwed in. <clears throat> you can see they work quite well. Now, is it necessary to go that complicated with all three of those hinges? Absolutely not. I've got four times as many screws in it than it originally did, but like I said, I like to I like to make my stuff last. I would think I would call that a proper fix.